Let's move on to markets in its neighbour, Kenya, turning our attention to the NSD20, looking at 4,763 points. That market shedding uh, 22 points, almost 23 points on the day, looking at how the currency is faring against the greenback. Uh, you're looking at that shilling coming in at 83.85 against the dollar, steady as she goes this hour. Well, let's cross over to Nairobi right now, where we've got uh, Ian Kachaicho, the research analyst at Kestrel Capital, standing by from our Nairobi studios. Ian, thanks very much for joining us today. So if you could just run us through activity today because certainly we're seeing selling pressure from last week continuing on the market. Yes, yeah, certainly. And thank you, Samantha, for having me. Um, basically, today we've seen the same trend as last week, uh, save for Friday, uh, where we had the index edge up a little bit. But today we've seen um, uh, the, the market turnover remain in the, in the zone of 200, 200 million Kenya shillings, 3.5 around the early three million uh, d d d the three million d d d dollar zone and um, basically active trading on the banks we have active trading on ABL as well uh, Safaricom of course in anticipation of uh, of full year earnings mm -hmm. so we've seen active and of and the foreign investors have been strong on the buy side we've seen this trend also last week and uh, some local investors also active on the selling side Let's look at uh, some of the stocks that have been in focus and certainly are always in focus when it comes to foreign buying. But uh, Kenya Commercial Bank, um, it's up about 40% uh, uh, this year, not 4 tenths of percent, 40% percent this year uh, and pretty much around 2.3% below that, closing high of 42.5. Is it likely that the stock's got more leg uh, room to move higher? I mean, what's going to be the main catalyst to drive uh, the likes of KCB specifically stronger right now? Um, I, 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 it'll be the anticipation of quarterly earnings uh, in, in the first quarter of this year. We feel KCB, as if you observed last week, it didn't really fall as much as uh, it didn't have as much volatility as much as Equity Bank and uh, say maybe COP. But and we expect basically foreign demand to remain strong. Of course, it's an industry leader, and that should drive the counter up uh, probably even beyond 42 uh, if you price in the earnings and going forward to into this year uh, pricing in the earnings to come forward. What's your view right now on, on banks and, and quality of assets this year given of course uh, they have been lending uh, large amounts into the economy. Do you, do you think that uh, asset quality is under strain or could be potentially under strain? No, I, I, I don't hold that view. Um, I feel banks are really going to experience a lot of organic growth this year from growth in their loan book. We're actually seeing that. We've seen housing finance basically set the trend. Growth in their loan book and growth in interest income from that, uh, as well as uh, shrinking deposit expenses. So um, I think as far as asset quality goes, um, our banks, a lot of the big banks are well capitalized. And we think organic growth will actually support their earnings as well as the capital buffers going forward. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about uh, oil marketers, Kennel Cobal and Total. What's your sense as to which of the stocks is a better investment right now? If you're looking at uh, the kind of likelihood of Kenya becoming an oil and gas player, and of course uh, one of these two companies uh, potentially benefiting, or perhaps both of them, of course, benefiting uh, from that. Pardon? I didn't, get your, the, I, I didn't get the last part of your question. What's your, what's your bet right now on, on uh, Kennel Cobal versus Total? I mean, which one is likely to come out on top when it comes to benefiting from developments in the oil sector in Kenya? Well, hard to say between Total and Kennel, of course. But um, I would say for Total, of course, it's reached, uh, it's, it's, it's surpassed, it's, it has a 97% foreign ownership. So, um, I, I guess the oil discoveries would benefit the oil industry as a whole. Uh, perhaps Kennel Cobil has an advantage because of a wide um, retail outlets across the country. And so, but I wouldn't want to put pick either. I would more look at the industry in terms of how it's going to benefit from the oil, 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 and maybe oil and gas as well. Some mm -hmm. m maybe some gas fines as well. But um, I would look at the industry as a whole. Lastly, uh, Ian, let's just talk about a supermarket company, uh, Uchumi, and I suppose no direct competitors on the local boss, but we know Nakamut is a stronger competitor. Do you think that uh, the 8.5% uh, drop-off or selling that came through today uh, represents a buying opportunity? I mean, what's your thoughts on the investment case for Uchumi right now? 
Yes, I do support your view on uh, like it, 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 it would prevent, it would actually be a good opportunity to buy Uchumi right now. Uh, we saw the CEO uh, released information that the, it's, uh, Uchumi is planning a branch expansion opening. The board has approved in the region of six new branches to be opened this year, uh, as well as more branches to be opened in Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania, Uganda, I, I believe, and um, I think we'll, we'll, we, we should generally see the company um, report strong earnings growth going forward in the medium term uh, based on that branch expansion as well as uh, general economic growth and also the interest rates do affect this in terms of uh, people's disposable incomes as well. Um, so inflation stable, you expect more people going into the supermarkets and, into the, and, and higher earnings for the sector as a whole and Uchumi definitely presents a good opportunity right now.